Hello, my name is Liz Teagouts, and this is my second uh, video response to one of Dr. Sadler's lectures. Uh, hopefully this one is a bit more coherent and organized than the last one was. Um, so anyway, this is, uh, I watched uh, both lectures on the Fado, and this is my response basically to the second lecture. Um, and I just want to address two points in the second lecture. So first one, if I can get going here, there we go. Uh, Dr. Sadler asks, uh, well, he asks it in two questions. You know, do you know? Do you believe that there is a soul, or something similar, suffer from the body, or do you not? Um, I personally do not believe a soul exists, um, simply by the fact that there really is no empirical evidence for dualism. Um, just plain and simple. It can't be perceived by any of the senses. It can't be perceived by, you know, any means of science. Therefore, there is no reason to assume that it exists. Um, Dr. Sadler then asked, what would convince me that a, that a soul does exist? Um, like I just stated, you know, empirical evidence, something that can be physically tested and measured. If that were the case, there you go. Uh, he then, he does ask, he asks his class, do, you know, the, the people who said they didn't know, do they hope that there is a soul? Personally, no, I don't. Why? Because I believe it renders the body pointless. Um, as I state here, if we follow Plato and indeed most religions, the point is to deny the body and keep the soul pure. Well, then why have a body? Why risk corruption? Um, using Plato's philosophy, why separate from the forms and go through the hassle of recollection at all? Um, you know, why would, why? Why would we do that? What is the point of that? Of having a soul and then making it suffer for what that yeah that just makes no sense to me at all so anyway moving on second point um dr sadler explains in the lecture and in a handout uh which is actually linked to in the description of the second lecture uh which is really nice uh socrates argument for the immortality of the self so I am going to grant for now that a soul does exist. So I want to start with Socrates' response to Kebe's pro problem that the soul wears out over time um, and will eventually die in its last body because the soul has to sustain the body, the bodies it inhabits, or as Socrates points out, the soul when entering a body becomes diseased. So, Socrates brings on the metaphysics. Uh, and I'm going through this just to kind of make sure that I understand what's going on because I might not. So, um, Socrates uh, goes into uh, the doctrine of forms, saying things are certain ways <clears throat> by participating in a form. Uh, for example, Socrates says, if there be anything beautiful other than absolute beauty, should there be such that it can be beautiful only in as far as it partakes of absolute beauty? Um, unfortunately, my cop, my e-book copy of this doesn't really get page number, so I can't quote a page number. Um, but that is a quote from the text. Um, second, uh, things can become more that thing by participating in the form. Uh, Socrates explains, by greatness only great things become great and greater, greater, and by smallness the less become less. So there's that. Uh, participation in forms can be used to compare different things. So Socrates uses the example that Simus is greater than Socrates but smaller than Phaedo Uh, by participating in both greatness and smallness, 
quote, because he is in a mean between them, exceeding the smallness of the one by his greatness and allowing the greatness of the other to exceed his smallness. Um, however, Socrates moves on and says the form itself cannot be both one thing and its opposite. So, quote, absolute greatness will never be great and also small. Now, it's here that it seems to me Socrates perhaps skips a step or... Con well, basically, he just contradicts himself, I think. That's, that's how I feel about it. Um, or, I'm really not following where Socrates is going, which is also possible. So, um, moving on. Also, opposites in a thing can't become their opposites. So... Whatever is in a thing cannot become its opposite. Either the opposite leaves the thing or stops existing in that thing. Um, Socrates illustrates by stating, quote, th that greatness in us or in the concrete will never admit the small or admit of being exceeded. Instead of this, one of two things will happen. Either the greater will fly or retire before the opposite, which is the less, or at the approach of the less has already ceased to exist. Um, so again, I mean, Socrates just pointed out that Samias participates in both greatness and smallness, but he now seems to say this isn't possible, uh, you know, once an opposite approaches, the other either, you know, fucks off or disappears like Kaiser Soze. Um, so I might be missing something here. I don't know. Uh, moving on. So we're going to finally get to the immortality of the soul. The soul, quote, is that of which the inheritance will render the body alive. So the body dies if the soul is separated from it. Therefore, soul equals life. The soul is life. So can then the soul die? Well, if soul equals life, the soul can't admit death because it can't become its opposite. It can't cease to exist because it would become its opposite as well. So, the only choice the soul has is to plea. So according to Plato, the soul cannot die and is therefore immortal. Now, Turn my page here. Now, Dr. Sadler suggested at the end of his lecture that there was something wrong with this argument. And I'm going to assume uh, for now that he does not mean using an argument about whether or not the soul actually exists. Because if that were it, uh, then the entire do dialogue would become meaningless. So, here's what I think. If the body has the soul inhering in it, that means the soul becomes inseparable from the body. In other words, the soul cannot flee the body when faced with its opposite death. So either the soul, or life, can become its opposite and is therefore not immortal, or because the body now possesses life, both body and soul are immortal. Um, that's it. Nice and short. Um, I want to thank Dr. Sadler again for making me think so hard. I ended up breaking out the ibuprofen and staying up way past my bedtime. Uh, so thanks for listening. See you next time.